Great. Thank you so much, Patrick, and thank you, everyone, for having me. Um, and, and we at NASA are obviously so excited, and as Patrick said, you know, we are about partnerships and collaborating because this is a big deal. But let's go, and um, the bottom line up front is that um, there are two um, there are two eclipses coming up, and we have our website um, up and running with some specific content. Um, there are science activation teams that um, ha that will help get that science out. Um, there's some logos, eclipse uh, glasses are in progress with our partners, um, and collaborating with again uh, public partner public sorry public private partnerships. Um, and we attended that that uh, AAS uh, planning workshop April eighth and ninth, and there is so much excitement and so much more to uh, to come. Um, so going back to uh, the total solar eclipse in 2017, um, that was on a Monday, and it was around um, 70 miles wide, that path where you could actually see the full totality. And the maximum duration of about 2 minutes and 40 seconds, so it's a flat from Oregon to uh, South Carolina, and around 12.2 million people lived in that solar, uh, the, the solar, solar eclipse path. Um, so, but it was estimated that around 215 million Americans saw either partial or a full eclipse. Um, now there's an annular eclipse that is upcoming in 2023 in October, and uh, this, it, this happens when the sun does not, uh, the moon does not quite cover up the sun, but is, it, it's furthest from its Earth, so the Earth, so it only covers up everything except a ring of fire around it. And this is a very um, international eclipse that sweeps through uh, the U.S., Central America, as well as South America. Um, now, again, there will be a ring of fire path and then a partial eclipse throughout the rest of the continent. Um, but, but the main, uh, main excitement here is the total solar eclipse by 2024. Um, so it will happen on Monday, the, uh, the 8th of April, 115 miles wide is that path of totality where the moon completely blocks out the sun. And um, birds come home to roost thinking that it's nighttime, nighttime animals start stirring, uh, temperatures can drop 10 degrees or so. Um, so there's, there's a lot that happens on that totality and it is worth getting to totality. Um, and that's why people do chase the eclipse. Um, that day and, and create some headaches in terms of moving around and not necessarily staying put when they want to see the totality. Um, so the max duration of about four minutes and 30 seconds, almost double the, the time that of the last one, um, will happen in Texas um, and then sweep through, again, Mexico uh, through 13 states to Canada and really this time go over a lot of major city, uh, cities, San Antonio, Austin, Fort Worth, Dallas, Indianapolis, uh, Cincinnati, Columbus. Cleveland, uh, Buffalo, and, and Buffalo are just some of the major cities it's going to go over. So that's 31.5 million people, people that live in the path, and that's 2.5 times that of the solar eclipse. So 40 to 50 million people could see the total eclipse. And again, the next one isn't coming until 2040, so it's in, it, um, you know, in, it will be a great uh, science learning experience for uh, everyone to be able to participate in this one. So all those science um, projects that we are focused on, um, these are outreach programs that will help um, help educate people. Um, people from the Exploratorium are helping with subject trained subject matter experts um, to uh, to speak at events. Um, the Eclipse Soundscape does a very uh, interesting rumble map. So you actually have an app that you can you can feel the eclipse as well as hear the eclipse, the noise that. Um, that is happening. So that's uh, another way for folks to experience the science of the eclipse. There will be ballooning happening, um, and uh, so there will be uh, balloons sent up with um, a camera and uh, at various locations along the path to take images um, uh, there for scientific purposes. Uh, ambassadors, again, uh, are folks who will go and be able to give talks and to talk about science to people along the eclipse path. Um, the Heliophysics um, Education Activation Team uh, works at NASA Goddard, and uh, they are uh, doing different programming as well as, as uh, efforts uh, during this eclipse. And then there's also a series of planetarium shows. So there's a lot of excitement 
um, around the science and around um, getting the word out there. Um, so for NASA in general, safety is, is the core value and priority number one during any of these events. So that's why um, the eye safety is going to be key and we're partnering with folks, especially uh, the AAS, uh, in order to make sure that the glasses are, um, are available to folks so that they can safely enjoy, uh, enjoy this total eclipse. Um, broad participation as well as science and public engagement and the science activation that was talked about earlier as well as citizen science, um, people who are non-professional scientists also doing um, scientific experiments along, uh, along the path. So uh, this again is our website, uh, the solar system.nasa.gov slash eclipse. Um, it's just a version 0.5. There will be specific updates on the science between the 23 and 24 eclipse um, in version 1 and 2 that are forthcoming. Um, so with that, I think that that is my last slide. And um, I'm happy to take any questions during the question Q&A period. Thank you.